Hi and welcome back to Garden Ninja. Now today's wildlife design guide is going to be all about how to sow your own perennial wildflower meadow. So come on, let's get cracking. So when it comes to planting up a wildflower meadow, there's a few options that you're going to be faced with. Now the first option is the annual wildflower meadow. And this means that every year it needs to be reseeded for new growth each year. At the end of the season, the plants that have flowered will die back, so you're really reliant on self-seeding. The second option is a herbaceous perennial wildflower meadow. And whilst it may not have every colour under the rainbow in it, it's far easier both to establish and to look after. And once you've got it established, there's very little that you need to do other than sit back and enjoy it. So come on, let me show you more. So the first set of plants I'm going to show you are these, Helicampane, also known as Inula Helanium, which are related to other Helaniums. Now these plants are beautiful and they send up these huge yellow ragged daisy like flowers. They do get quite tall so they will add a load of drama to a meadow. They get to about a metre and a half to two metres and they will bulk up over a few years. They're relatively low fuss, they've got this almost slightly hairy leaf that's really distinctive and they will add a real pop of colour to any meadow. So the next plant is this, Lecanthemum vulgar, the oxeye daisy. And if you ask someone to draw a meadow, you'd probably find that they drew these. They're a white daisy-like flower, they grow to about 80 centimetres to a metre, and they're really synonymous with meadows. They will tolerate horrendous conditions and they don't ask for much in return. So I've grown quite a lot of these because I want to use these as almost like the base of the meadow mix. So the next plant is this beauty and it's a mallow, Malvus sylvestris. It always reminds me of sweet shops because it's quite tall but it has these sweet shop pinks and light purple flowers on it. Now the leaves from the young are edible, it's a herb, it's also native to the UK so it's great for wildlife and it will also tolerate our miserable winters and unpredictable summers. But again this is going to give me that colour pop and it will fill out nicely over the next two to three years. So down here we've got blue hyssop, hyssop officinalis, and I'm adding this into the mix. Now it's a semi-evergreen herbaceous perennial, in our wet winters usually it dies back, but it has these little delicate blue flowers. So if it survives the winter, I'll probably leave it in situ, if it doesn't it will get cut back to the ground like the rest of the herbaceous perennials. So the next plant is this one, which is Palmonium caerulium, otherwise known as Jacob's Ladder. Now this is another blue plant and it sends up these little leaves that look like a ladder, which is where it gets its name from. It has very delicate blue and yellow flowers. Now it's probably only going to grow to about 80 or 90 centimetres, but it will add that mid layer of light blue flowers and it will really add a nice soft delicate touch to this meadow. Now the next plant is yarrow, Achillium millifolium which you'll know from my exploding Aston garden that I absolutely love this species. Now it can take over in lawns, so do take care, but it will give you an incredible show of these umbellifer flowers throughout the summer. Now this one is a white variety, and you don't often see this. Usually you're looking at Achillea, Credo or Terracotta, and the yellows, oranges or pinks. This is going back to basics and introducing this really hardy variety. So I can't wait to get this one in, but as I said, if you've got a small garden, you might want to keep your eye on this one. So I'm also going to be using chicory in my meadow mix, and the reason for that is it's got these really attractive looking salad like leaves, and you can actually eat the leaves of this, and you can also roast the root, which gives a similar taste, I say, to coffee, but I had it once and it actually wasn't that pleasant. However, this will have blue flowers again, the leaves are really nice, it sends up these delicate pale pale blue flowers in the second year onward, so that one's going to be a really nice one for the mix. Now this is toad flax, Lanaria vulgaris, and it's a parasitic plant, and what that means is it will leach nutrients of surrounding grasses, and you may wonder, well why would you want that? 
Well, grass is a really fast growing plant. In the wildflower meadow, if you're not careful, it can outcompete your beautiful wildflower meadow plants. So you always need a few of these in the mix to help slow down the grass and give all your plants a fighting chance. Now you may have also heard of yellow rattle, which is an annual version of a parasitic plant like this as well. So don't panic, but make sure you have a few in your mix, which will help even up the odds. Now all of these plants have been grown in my greenhouse. It's not particularly big, it's not very fancy, but it does show that no matter what size garden you've got, you could grow all of these yourself. And I find it's far better to grow these from seed because A, it's cheaper, but B, when it comes to planting them out, which I'm going to show you next, you can really carefully consider the position of these plants, which ultimately means you're going to have a far nicer wildflower meadow. So come on, let's go have a look. So I've brought up a chunk of the herbaceous perennials out of the greenhouse. Now because I've grown these from seed, I can't actually remember how many I've got. So I'm going to bring them all up, lay them out here in the different species, count them, and then I'll be able to estimate how many I've got for each sort of square metre of this garden. Now I'm not going to completely blanket plant these. There needs to be a bit of rhyme and reason to this, because although it's a wildlife friendly garden, I don't want it to turn into just a hodgepodge mess. So I'm probably thinking that I will lay these out to mark out some of the paths. So they will line the paths almost in like clumps or pods of plants. Um, and that way it will help me to remember where the paths are and it will give the garden a real flow. That's what I'm attempting to do. Whether it works in practice is probably another matter, but I think it's always best to have a plan rather than just start banging them in the ground. I'm going to use a really sharp trowel, lift the turf off where they're going to go so that they've got a fighting chance and then plop them in. I've already mowed this, so it's already at quite a low setting. You don't want the grass to be competing too much with these plants. So mow in a really short setting, and then when you pop them in, make sure you remove the little um, circle of turf that you're gonna be replacing them with. So I'm gonna be putting in around 400 plants into this space. But if you've got a smaller garden, that's not a problem either. You simply scale down the amount of plants. If you're dealing with a, say, one metre by four metre strip at the end of a lawn that you want to naturalise, you may be able to use between five and ten of these kinds of plants to get that wildflower meadow look. Now these are going to take a number of months before they get established, and it's going to be next year until you start to see that look of the wildflower meadow with all the flowers, but it's well worth the time and investment. I'm going to make sure that I trim around these plants to make sure the grass doesn't outcompete them until they're established. You also need to make sure, like with any new plant, that you keep them well watered. I'm going to be providing updates in this wildlife garden series as the meadow progresses and develops over time. And next month I'm going to be showing you how you can make a bug hotel for any size garden. So there we have it, my easy way of planting up your own wildflower meadow at home, no matter what size garden you've got. If you like this video, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel where there are hundreds more garden design hints, tips and hacks from me, the Garden Ninja. And I've got a few more to go in. Happy gardening!